This episode of Blue Grip Podcast is sponsored by Sons of Liberty Gunworks, proud law enforcement supporters. And so I was asked by someone who knew I did was working as a hobby if I would build a chair similar to one of those for an SAPD officer that, that was killed that he knew. I, I built that chair and gave it to him. I didn't realize what it was going to mean to that substation. Hey listeners, it's Blue Grip Podcast. We're back. Um, got a cool guest, selfless servant guest on today. Yep. Your host, Clint McNear and Tyler Owen. T.O. What's up? How are you, T.O.? Doing good. Doing good. You look nice. Yeah. Thank you. I got a nice little tan living on the San Marcos River temporarily. Yeah, no kidding, man. You look like you've been in Cancun. <laughs> yeah. It's been nice for sure. Um, Appreciate everybody that tunes in. Hit subscribe, like, tell somebody about the show, comment down below what you like, what you don't like about Tyler. Be nice. Um, <laughs> or about the show. You can tell us what you like or don't like about the show. If you don't want to talk bad about T.O., you can talk about the show and what you like or don't like. Or Hit us up at bluegrit at tmpa.org. You can contact us. Like we said a while ago, we got a very selfless servant on. Uh, Saving a Heroes Place founder, Tommy Capel. Thank you. Hey, man. How are you? Good, yeah. We're good. Welcome back to Texas. Yeah, it's been a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you took, took your show on the road. Yeah. So, Saving a Heroes Place, and we'll dive way deep into it, but they've taken their show on the road and been up to Maine and back, and uh, instead of building chairs here and shipping them out, they are building them there for the fallen uh let's dive in first who's tommy who the hell's tommy where were you born tell us about who tommy is i know you're gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> he said nothing's off limits we're going deep yeah deep. i take that back uh born in san antonio lived there most of my life until i you know got talked into moving to uh, rosenberg but yeah i lived born raised in san antonio my whole life um Worked. I changed jobs a lot. It seems like now that I look back, because I worked. <laughs> <laughs> I started out of high school. Worked at Frost Bank for thirteen years before I became a cop. Oh San, no, kid! I didn't know that. Yeah. So then I became a cop with San Antonio. I was there almost ten years before I started doing this full time. So we'll see how long I lasted. To <laughs> <laughs> any uh, any background? Your family law enforcement. What made you leave Frost Bank? Going to going to Popo. Yeah, my dad retired from san antonio after 33 years so i always wanted to do it i just i got a good job at the bank and it was kind of like man do i want to leave this and then finally i just you know did it before i got too much older um how old were you when you became a cop uh 32 oh that's that's fairly old for getting into yeah. law enforcement is that a good thing or was it interesting yeah i think it was a good thing i guess growing up law enforcement my dad was a cop you kind of know yeah you have a good idea what you're getting yourself into a lot of rich history of San Antonio Police Department. For yeah, sure. no kidding. Yeah, um, got out of the academy. San Antonio put their own mm-hmm. academy on. Yes, and went to patrol. I guess from there. Yeah, and then um, two months after he graduated, my classmate was killed in line of duty. So, by a drunk driver. So, I ultimately I ended up going to our DWI task force. Oh wow! I kind of had, you know, I just I wanted to do that after that. So. Um, I was only on patrol like three years, and then I went to the DBI task force, and I was there the rest of the time until I left. So. Losing academy mate to that DWI accident, right? Was is that? I always tell young people, you always figure out what your niche is in law enforcement, whether it's chasing dope or stolen cars or DWIs. Is that specifically what kind of steered you into your passion to? Yeah, definitely. I don't think I would have went there had that not happened. It wasn't something I, you know, when I graduated, oh, I'm going to go to. You know, DWI, I really didn't even know they had that when I graduated. Um, or I didn't know what it was, yeah. what it entailed, but, it's, you know, when that happened, it kind of stays in the back of your mind, like, man. Had you, you know? had that envision whenever you were? Did, I mean, obviously, you said you just said that you didn't even know that that existed, but, I mean, was that your focus? Uh, did you have envisions to go to maybe, like, dope or canine or anything when you graduated? Not really. I didn't really have a... You just had to be a cop. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't like, man, I'm going to go here. You know, like you see people, I'm going to join. I'm going to go to SWAT. I didn't have like, no. Nah. You just want to be a cop in San Antonio. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. How many in academy, in your academy? Uh, we started, I think, with like 41 and then graduated 31, 32, something like that. That's a pretty good yeah. 25% drop in uh, yeah. drop rate. Yeah. Um, How long is academy in San Antonio now? Do y'all run it in-house? I'm yeah, it's in-house, like eight months. Yeah, so it was January to August when I, when I started, yeah. Um, what year was that you started? Uh, 2010. And did 10 years, you said? Yeah. How far into your career um, did you start saving the Heroes Place? Uh, we started that in 2013. So pretty pretty early. Was there something, or was it related to your academy mate? What, what manifested no, I mean, that idea in you? It wasn't really related to that initially, because um, we, he got killed two months after he graduated, like I said, and in San Antonio, we lost an officer every year for the first four years I was on. Wow. So it's like a continuous thing, you know, and um, and there's there's chairs in San Antonio at one of the substations that somebody did years ago, um, and so I was asked by someone who knew I did woodworking as a hobby if I would build a chair similar, you know, to one of those for for an SAPD officer that, that was killed that he knew. I didn't know him. I never worked with him or anything, so I didn't... I built that chair and gave it to him. I didn't realize what it was going to mean to that substation. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't know him. Um, but what ultimately started is right after I gave him that chair is when the Boston Marathon bombing happened. Um, an officer caller was sitting in his patrol car, and he was shot and killed. For whatever reason, that bothered me. I, I couldn't sleep. I was angry. Um, and I had just done that, that chair, so I was... I was like, man, I'm going to send them an email, see if I can build them a chair. So I, I sent them an email, not really expecting to get a response, really. It was just, you know what, I'm going to offer this. I want to do something for them because I know it was going to be tragic for, for MIT. They should never experience anything like that. So Did you send it to, I guess, like MIT PD to his agency? Right. Yeah, I just sent it to, I believe it was like Info or something. I didn't have any contacts there or anything, never been there. I don't know why. That, I still don't know why that one bothered me so much. I think it was just the way it happened. You never, yeah. you never, wa you never want to be just sitting in your patrol car. You know, you want to go out fighting. Mm -hmm. So I, they replied like quick. They were like, oh, "Yeah, we we definitely need something." You know, then I'm like, "Whoa!" You know, looking on a map and seeing that it's two thousand miles away. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did I get myself into? Yeah, so I told my wife, "Hey, um, you know, I might have, <laughs> yeah, I might have sent an email to this place <laughs> like two thousand miles away," and. Uh, she was on board. She's like, all right, let's do it. So she started raising money. We built the chair, and we drove it all the way up there. And, man, that, that's when we saw, like, like what it the meant to have it. Right. Now, was the chair, the, the, the chairs that you currently build, was it almost the exact re replica of what you saw at the substation? I mean, the the, the idea? Uh, it's, it's different. The one at one substation's, um, I believe it's like a chair they went and got and they put like a metal plaque on it okay i believe that's like the original chair that was placed in at san antonio and then there was four others that were done um it kind of resembled those but then we've we've changed it quite a bit over over the years and yeah. now we have pretty much a set um chair that we do almost every time the name was that something that evolved or it was just natural that that's what it was or was that something that just dawned on you guys one day that this is what we're doing. This is what we're building. Yeah, I mean, we were we didn't have a name when we first started. We didn't even know we were going to keep doing this when we when we first started it. Um, yeah, and it just kind of you know came to us like you know this is what we're doing. We're we're saving their place at the at the agency, and that's how the name came about. And when they initially reached out to you, had you dabbled in woodworking before? Was that a hobby or? Yeah, I've been woodworking since I was a kid, so I've I've always done it um, as a hobby. So yeah, it was. To that the, part wasn't new. To the ability and the skill you have now, or is it is it improved? No, I would or? say definitely improved now doing this, yeah. Who 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 intro did that? Uh, my dad's always done woodworking. I always took it in school. I've just always, yeah, always been involved in it. I started out, when I first started getting big into it, I would make fish aquarium stands. Um, that's how I got started into it, like, a lot. So, so let's go back to wherever you, you, you made the initial first chair. Uh, for the MIT guy, the officer. Uh, kind of explain that process, the emotions going behind it, the travel up there, the initial arrival, and kind of what that experience, because that's really what really drove you to begin this process and the response that you got from that. Yeah, absolutely. We, Like I said, my, my wife just started raising money because we knew it was going to be a, a long drive. 
Um, and we drove nonstop. We didn't, we just switched drivers. Um, oh gosh. So we just drove straight through there. It was like 30 something hours. And, um, when we gave them that chair and so many of them were in the, in the lobby and at the small department, um, just seeing the emotion and the silence and you, you know, they're thinking back about him and all that. And it, we knew, um, uh, I think we, we knew then like, man, we, we got to keep doing this. Um, once we saw that emotion, uh, we're still very close with them. Uh, we talk to them all the time, text back and forth. Um, so, and I think that's what, what triggered, like, man, we, we got to keep doing this. This is a big deal. You know, we just weren't expecting that. Even when we got there, they were like, what do y'all want to say? And we're like, we don't want to say anything. We just want to give you this chair. You know, we didn't know what yeah. we were doing. And, um, but it, yeah, it meant a lot to them. It, they actually had it pushed up to where he sat. So, it, you know, we're like, oh, this, yeah, we're like, well, this is a, you know, this is a roll call thing for, for all, cause ultimately that's what it was for. It was for the department. It wasn't for the family. It wasn't for, um, it was for the department. A lot of stuff's done for the family as it should be. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot done for the, for the department when an officer's killed. You just go back to work. Yep. Um, and experiencing that ourselves, I think that's why we, we wanted to do this. Yeah. Y'all's chair now, well, I guess maybe back up even further for our listeners. Um, we have a lot of non-law enforcement, a lot of civilian listeners. Tommy's uh, mission is saving a hero's place, and the spirit behind that, they build these amazing cherry wood? Now it is, yeah. Cherry, cherry wood. wood chairs that beautifully made, handmade, every one of them's handmade, specific for the fallen officer it may have a patch or or challenge coins from that agency or, or however um, saving a hero's place in, in the the fallen department designed that chair but um, and it stays generally I guess in squad room for most of the agencies and it's to save that person's place so when you come into lineup that person will never be in lineup again but there's a chair there being saved for that hero so that they'll always be in lineup uh, in spirit with this beautiful, beautiful chair. Yeah, and I think, and I think for me, like was out, when I was with San Antonio, I don't know how how you guys did it, but when when we go to roll call, you sit in the same chair. Yeah, old every habits. roll call. It's <laughs> yeah. like a super. You know, you walk in superstitious. You walk in, someone's in your chair. You're like, no, you got to get out of my chair. Like. I need to sit in so that... And when you're new, work. it's generally front and center on the front row, and then kind of right. as you... Yeah, you, you work your way back, and if there's any back there. <laughs> and if a rookie walks in and sits on the back row, you might as well have stolen somebody's beer or kissed their wife, because you're right. going to be told very quickly to get your young right. rookie ass back up to the front row or yeah. wherever it is you belong out of my chair. So when, a, you know, when an officer's killed, now who you know, who sits in that chair? No, you, know, you know no one's going to want to sit there for... Know, a, a while and so you know we just wanted to kind of replace that where you know what now this is his chair you know this is this is his or her spot now so you can you know people could sit there that's ultimately what we hope you know so this started in 2013 obviously you were working as a full-time cop um that's a long time really for you to be working as a full-time cop and then to take this other really charity uh at what point did you really stop and go Man, I, this is this is becoming a full time gig, uh, and and I really want to stop what I'm doing and, and being a full time cop and devote all of my attention and all of my efforts towards this. Because uh, I got I got to be honest with you, just like I sent you that text the other day, I woke up at five thirty in the morning, didn't know that you were three hours behind me or three <laughs> hours behind me when I sent that. It was like three a.m. when I sent that text. But I wake up all the time, and I, we we follow your page just to you know be us being ten PA. It blows my mind, really the the amount of travel that you do, and the amount of chairs that you build, and the passion, and the drive that you've got to wake up every single day, and the devotion that you give back to these departments, the fallen, and to do that day in, day out, week after week, day after day. Man, it's uh, it's inspiring, and. It's awesome, really, and that's why we wanted to, you know, for you to come on this podcast and explain that. Um, it's 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 admirable, and on behalf of TMPA and uh, you know, guys, that's got twenty years of law enforcement experience. It's it's awesome. So, at what point did you really just say, you know what, 
I love law enforcement. I love being a cop every day, but this is this is more important to me. Did you realize it was going to grow as quick as it did? No. When we, when we got back from from MIT, we we built a chair for my classmate. We built several more chairs for San Antonio, um, and we started getting emails, like inundated with emails back in Massachusetts because people, I guess they did stories because they didn't do like a story while we were there, um, but people started seeing what we had done, and we got more emails from Massachusetts on, on officers that were, were killed prior years, and it just took off. Um, it's like 14, 2014. Right. You know, our, our vision when we first started was we'll reach out and, you know, do all these chairs, and that rarely happens um, just because we get too many requests. But, you know, I, I guess a couple years into it, maybe two or three years into it, we had we were upwards, upwards of 80 chair requests um, on oh, the list, wow. and we didn't we didn't anticipate that. You know, we eighty in queue to be built, mm-hmm. and I started burning all my time. I had a lot of time saved up. You can bank a lot of time uh, with the department between CT and uh, vacation time and holiday. There's all this different time you can bank, you know. And I just started burning all that time building chairs and traveling to present them. And before I knew it, I had like sick time left, and that was really it. And that's when you you kind of start making a decision like, man, I either got to stop burning my time and just, you know, do this as I can, or I got to spend all my time on this. And it was, it was Slater who, you know, we met one day and he's like, man, you, you could make this huge if, you know, if you, if you quit. And at the time I'm like, you're crazy. Like, <laughs> Easy for you to say I'm Slater. Like San Antonio, <laughs> like there's no way. Um, like I never initially never thought, and it was a, your conference, I think, in 2015 when when we met him. It was at the TMPA conference. We were sitting there talking to him, and when he said that, and we were like, yeah, no. And then we met him probably at another conference. We wouldn't we wouldn't see him all the time. We'd see him at, at your conferences. And then I think it was 20, probably the 2019 conference. In Houston. Yeah, in Houston. We were sitting in the lobby, and he's like, man, you really should should resign and do this full time. And I'm like, God. that's scary <laughs> yeah you know and our board's there my wife's there and they're like yeah you know you should and i'm like oh, they're supposed to be the reason you know my wife's supposed to be the reasoning behind it. but um yeah so it was 2019 when when i left the department in october um and it's you know it's it's been scary but you know the support we've received received has has helped us we have some diehard supporters you know you guys and real fender and onsite decals they're just constantly supporting us and it's it's what's kept us afloat especially through 2020 um because we couldn't do fundraising and i had just left the department and i'm oh, like man, i'm like yeah, oh man i'm going back you know timing of timing of you right. even and then COVID hitting right oh i didn't think about that so i'm like i think there was you know a couple of times where we're like man i, I think we're gonna, i'm about to go back like because you could go back within like a year and that's kind of why i was like you know what i can leave try this i could always go back yeah but um our support grew in 2020, um, and it, it got us through even without doing fundraisers. So that was a huge, huge help. But, yeah, it's it was really scary. I guess probably, like, the first year is when it was the scariest. You know, I know we didn't have health insurance for, like, a year. And so that, you know, that part was scary. So when you um, left SAPD, did you guys stayed remote for a bit working before you moved um out to Relentless Defender, or did you guys move out there pretty quick after? Oh, yeah, we moved really quick after. Um, and it, initially, we we rented a house there because we, we still were like, man, I hope this works. Let's not buy a house. And that's, you know, we don't want to commit to too much. And so, uh, but we had sold our house in, in the San Antonio area and moved there. And um, we were working out of out of RDA for since, I guess, early 2020. Almost three years Two and a half, three years. Wow. Right. God, I didn't realize y'all were there that long. Seems like yesterday. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like y'all were there just yeah. a short period. So since inception 2013, do you know a rough number of where uh, number of chairs you've built so far? Yeah, so we're like at 252, I believe. And um, how many in queue? Uh, we usually maintain about 30 all the time. We'll, you know, we'll go somewhere, present a chair, and we'll get a request on our way home or on our way back. Um, and so we, we pretty much maintain about a queue of around 30 chairs now all the time. And a chair 
I know initially a chair used to take quite some time to put together. Um, and you guys are, uh, at some point, when you chose to leave RDA, I guess, before we dive into the chair. What what was the shift in having a big, big shop? And what, what was that decision internally look like for you guys to, to go on the road? Well, we, you know, having that shop was amazing to us having all being able to get all that more equipment and all that and we had so we had a department come to to our shop from georgia um two of the officers from the department came uh, his dad his two brothers they all came to to our shop and they built a chair with us over like three days and it was totally different than what we were used to that you know that experience we're still very i was actually just texting the dad yesterday we're still very close with them too. See, we were used to building a chair, take it, drop it off, leave most of the time. Without so, as much involvement of right. officers and family. Correct. Okay. And then, I got you. So when they came and they spent three days with us, you know, building this chair, we we're like, Whoa, this is completely different. You know, we really got to know them, got to know the, the officer, emotion. right? Became really good friends. Um, and they really had hands on in, in doing that chair. Uh, they did a lot of that chair. And so, we continued building in the shop, but in the back of our mind, we're like, man, that was, that was so cool. You know, we, we tried to get more departments to come to where we were at, but officers can't take off. Yeah. They just, they can't do it. You know, they they don't want to pay for travel. The department's just everyone shorthanded. And, um, so we were just, I think we were about to go to sleep one night and we're like, man, I wish we could just go to the apartment and build it so they don't have to come to us. And then, you know, you say that out loud and you're like, man, Maybe we can get that to work, and so we just started, you know, trying to figure out like what we would need to make that happen and how we could do it. And um, we started working on it, and we, you know, we did it. Uh, we started here in Texas, and it, it's been awesome doing it like that. It's just so different. Um, it's different because the family is seeing the chair, and the officers are seeing the chair while it's being built, which was different to us because no one saw the chair until we presented it. So that part's been kind of weird. Um, but it's been an amazing experience doing it to the, at the, the departments themselves. So what does that look like? I mean, so what equipment do you do? Y'all, y'all have a, a fifth wheel or a trailer or do y'all, do y'all kind of bounce hotel to hotel? Kind of explain that. Yeah. So we just bounce hotel to hotel or air, some departments have gotten us an Airbnb. Um, but yeah, so we're just pulling truck and, and cargo trailer and our trailer is basically our shop. Um, we just downsized everything, tried to find as much stuff as we could. That was uh, battery operated instead of electric. And um, we got solar generators for it to run the stuff that, you know, they don't make like the CNC. Um, it's got to be plugged in. So we had to get power. We didn't really want a gas generator out there, you know, wah, the whole time you're yeah, <laughs> yeah, trying to work yeah. on that. Um, so we started looking into the solar generators. But, yeah, most – it's been weird working with – I'm used to, like, big commercial equipment when I was in that shop. But now everything's in that little trailer. But, yeah, so we basically set up um, – over two days and build a chair and then we present it on the on the third day that we're there so for our listeners they were at rda relentless defender with slater and had a beautiful shop amazing shop and uh him and his partner in crime robbie um decided to take the show on the road they downsized the shop into a box trailer what size it's a 16 foot 16 foot box trailer they have a full woodworking shop that they can roll up plop down camp, pull out, and, and build a chair in two days. And um, to your point about being connected, I, I got to be in Carrollton um, when you guys were building a chair for Officer Notham. And the, the direct emotional engagement that you guys have with the family caught me off guard because – I mean, it, it, it's a piece of wood, but it means the world. And watching um, the officers come up, and I was watching you, like, because I, I know nothing about woodworking, so I, I could relate to some of the officers coming up, and you had to show them, like, how to sand or, you know, do whatever. And they were getting emotional working on a chair, and I thought, man, these – it may be a chair, it may be a piece of wood, but this is a connection that means a whole lot. And it all put into perspective – of why y'all chose to go on the road rather right. than manufacture a chair like Walmart would and ship it out and drop it off. Here you go. This should mean a lot right. to you. And watching the the sweat equity and the tears that family and 
coworkers got to put into it, I was like, eh, okay, now that all makes sense to my right. small brain. That's yeah, incredible. Well, we didn't even think of all that because when we, when we did the first chair we did in Burnett, Texas, um, you know, the family showed up and his young daughter was there and we were like, oh, man, this. And mm. I guess we weren't expecting uh, expecting that. So right away we were like, whoa, this, this is going to be different, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it's tough because we when we present a chair, we don't know anyone. Yeah. It's a little bit easier to stand up there and talk when you don't. But when you've met these families and officers over the over two days, and now we have to present the chair, I'm like, man, it's it's tougher yeah. um, to present it. It, it, it. And huge kudos to Robbie, your wife, because usually opposites attract or, like you said, voice of reason. And her mission her her passion for the mission is as strong as yours and um every idea you guys come up with she's all in 100 percent. and what a cool support system to have an ambitious goal of let's go on the road hey i think we're going to get in a trailer and head to maine and build a chair right. in maine. Yeah. cool let's roll yeah when we we're sitting there talking about it and she's like yeah i think that i'm like dang here we go again you know <laughs> you were like, supposed to stop me <laughs> yeah well, she, she is die hard involved in and her <clears throat> her passion is is definitely mine or or greater. You know. That's cool. And your kids, I mean, it's a family Absolutely. affair. Absolutely. Yeah, her son's been doing most of the video work. Um, when we when we go on the since we started going on the road, it's been you know mailing out merchandise and stuff has been tough. So our our middle daughter oh, yeah. has actually taken that over. So it's like a a family thing. You know, our, our oldest daughter is in North Carolina. North Carolina. She took our 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 big CNC that we had in the shop. We we gave it to her so that we'd have it there if we needed it, and she's been making auction items for us to throw up online and stuff like that because we don't have as much time. Nice. But yeah. So it's you know they've been doing this for ten years. It's all they all they've known. Wow. So for uh, for all of our listeners, y- y'all's mission is a nonprofit, and and to your point about it was it was a scary leap to jump out of the police department. Um. But you guys are supported by donations, contributions that come in. Um, and I forget the word you use for um, repeat. Our, it's like our membership, yeah. Our yeah, guard, yeah. Guardian Angels membership. Angel, membership yeah. Guardian Angels, yep. Um, how would somebody, if they were interested in making a contribution to Saving Heroes Place or becoming a Guardian Angel to make a monthly, whether it's hundred dollars a month or a dollar a month, whatever it is, if somebody wanted to be a guardian angel, make a repeating contribution or make a single one time, what would be the easiest way for people to do that? Yeah. So they would go to our website, org, and then you would see where it, where it has either donate or, or has information on becoming a guardian angel. Um, when I talked about 2020, you know, people supporting us, the guardian angel membership program is what got us through yeah. 2020 ultimately. Um, we have people that donate three dollars a month. We have people that donate two hundred dollars a month. And it, we didn't want to set an amount because we know everybody's financial situation is different. So yeah. we didn't set like you know you have to donate this much, um, and we're up to probably two hundred and eighty members I think that, nice. that donate to us. And a lot of them are three five dollars, but it it adds up, and that's what we tell people like you know three dollars doesn't seem like a lot to someone, but it does when a lot of people sure. do it. So. And to provide an agency a quality product Correct. takes, you know, for cherry wood, and again, I know less than zero about woodworking, but the beautiful wood you guys use and, and um, the items that you use and the equipment, CNC machine, you guys just had to replace because it broke down, and um, it takes those finances to do that. And you could turn out something that would look like I build screwing two two by fours together, which wouldn't look well. And um, I think it, it speaks a lot to the mission you guys have that you have so many guardian angels willing to continue to support the mission uh, and keep you guys on the road, taking care of others. Yeah, definitely. We, you know, we always talk about they're, they're the greatest people. Like <laughs> when we need something and someone donates, it's one of them. Like, and they're already donating monthly. They're just, right. it's just a group of, of amazing people that have that have gotten us to where we're at, basically. If somebody's wanting to send in a request, also, how would they do that? Same way, same website, right? And then it, there's a there's like a little image of a chair, and it has chair request form. They can fill it out online, and it, they hit submit, and it comes directly to us. Yep. And this is separate from TMPA charities. Yes, TMPA 
does support you guys, uh, but it's completely separate, you know, from TMPA Charities. I just want to make that clear right. to make the listeners, you know, aware that uh, it's separate from the TMPA Charities. Right. So, anyway, but man, it's a it's a uh, it's a huge mission and a huge take on that you've done, and uh, it's, it's a it's a phenomenal story. So, kudos to you for for doing it. Oh, I appreciate tell, it. Tell us about your partnership with Ranger Creek. How'd that come about? Um, I, I was somewhere and I saw a bottle that had like a law enforcement type label on it. And um, I was like, man, I want to do something like that. That'd be cool, you know? And so I I basically sent an email to every distillery I could Google, you know? And and they answered me uh, and they're local in San Antonio. And they were like, yeah, you know what? Can you, can you come in? We'd like to hear more about what you do. And so we and my wife went in there and talked to them and they they were on board. They're like, yeah, that's, you know, we definitely want to do this. This will be cool. And then, and so they've, we, I think we skipped a year, um, but then they're doing another one this year. So that'll, that'll be cool. They're going to do 300 bottles this year. Tell our listeners so, a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Yeah. So it's a Ranger Creek distilleries in San Antonio. So what they do is they, they do a limited run of, of a whiskey bottle that has our, our logo on it. Basically they, they change their, their label at the bottom to blue, and they put our logo at the top, and they sell 300 bottles of the, the bourbon whiskey, and they donate $30 per bottle back to us. That's cool. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, so it's a, it's a good fundraiser Where for us. Where can they get those at? Uh, they're going to release – the actual release party in San Antonio at the distillery is July 29th. Um, they'll start a pre-sale 30 days before that. So we'll, we'll post it on our, on our website when they start pre-selling the bottles. So pre-sale, you guys will post about in the releases at the distillery July 29th. 29th. Right. Maybe, maybe make a trip to field yeah. trip. You see that on my it's a field trip. Expansion. <laughs> and it's a beautiful bottle. Uh, yeah. I know last year's bottle was a beautiful looking bottle too. Yeah, and on-site decals prints the labels, so they're like the reflective like labels that would be on a. That's cool. emergency vehicle oh, so that's they're awesome. super cool yeah. that's a shout out to on site because they've yeah. been a huge supporter to oh, a lot of missions yeah um and and they wrap all of our trucks yeah they do do incredible work yeah they do um i'd we'd be remiss too if we don't hit up you guys have a uh gala coming up can you share with the listeners a little bit about that yes yeah, so our gala will be september 23rd and uh this year will be in biloxi mississippi at the beau Rivage casino i love Bil- biloxi yeah yeah can you say the word of that hotel again is that common spelling beau rivage beau rivage yeah, I, don't, I don't know if i want to spell it <laughs> common so spelling it's B- beau rivage yeah, common, common spelling, spelling. <laughs> B-E-A- b-e-a-u <laughs> um and I, I went last year in san antonio it's beautiful uh if you don't mind just if people are interested or thinking about um heading to it just little snapshot of what the gala looks like or what it is yeah so it's it's our biggest fundraiser of the year um we usually have uh, guest speakers there we have live auction silent auction um but it's our besides the ranger creek bottle it's our it's our only fundraiser of the year because we we can't spend a lot of time doing fundraisers because we have to build so many chairs chairs, right so i mean if we didn't have to have the gala we we probably wouldn't because that that probably takes away 10 or 12 chairs out of the year that we Uh that we could do um because when that gets close that takes a i mean you guys put on events you know how much time it takes to to put these events on so that's it takes months um away from us that we could be doing chairs so that's why we we try to just do the one big fundraiser and it it gets us through the year they can find more information out on the website right what was the date on that again uh september 23rd september 23rd Travel to Mississippi. Let your wife get dressed up fancy and go yep. to the Saving a Heroes Place Gala. Ranger it's a good Creek, time. Ranger Creek's probably sponsoring. <laughs> the joke. I'm, I'm kidding. TMPA is, though. Yeah, that's right. We <laughs> are. <laughs> we are. Don't be mad that it's not Angel's Envy. That's oh, not here we go. Here comes the jokes, I'm sure. <laughs> well, hey, we always end every podcast episode with three rapid-fire questions. Uh-oh. I got faith in you. I got Wait. faith. All right. You ready? Favorite cop movie or line from a cop movie favorite cop car and favorite drink of choice ranger creek <laughs> oh, there you go <laughs> yeah here you go great answer. smart probably have to be the crown vic oh 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, they need to bring them back. Yeah, so they do. Forward if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> Best car ever made. They're a cop movie. Or a line from a cop movie. Line from a cop movie? Damn. Tough one. While you think on that, we will give yeah. Ford a shout out. Saving Heroes Place did just switch to a Ford to pull that yeah. to pull that box trailer. Yeah, Ford Strong, Ford Strong, no doubt. I think Clint's obsessed with the Chevy Caprice, but he drives a Ford now. <laughs> just throwing it out there, as but, we both do. But in retrospect, I'm, I'm no longer angry about it. Pro- Vice President Gardner shared with me the people that are in love with the Crown Vic are too young to have driven a Caprice. <laughs> and so they're not speaking. They're, it's just speaking out of ignorance. I mean, it's just just because they didn't know. And it's well, not the their Crown fault. Was, then, was, 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 was working then, too. No, 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 no. Caprice yeah. was in early. But it was gone before you had the chance to drive it and see what real muscle this looks This is true. Like. This is true. So it's yeah. it's not it's not personal. It's, it's okay. All right. Thank you, Vice President Garner, for enlightening me on that and helping me find some peace of mind with Tyler's okay. answers. Yeah. yeah. It was like the size of an F-250. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Yeah. Ground makes the workhorse. Uh, all right. Man. Well, it's about wraps up everything. Again, man, we can't we can't thank you enough for not, not only what you do, but thank, thanks for coming on the uh, the show. We appreciate the, the CEO, Robbie, yeah, letting us borrow no doubt. <laughs> letting us borrow Tommy and for a little home. bit this morning. Yep. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. Where are you off to next? Iowa. Iowa. A little bit cooler weather, hopefully. Yeah. And then I saw you guys may have a West Coast or maybe on the horizon heading out west. Yeah, we are in the works of doing something for California, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Please stay safe traveling. Um, It's cool to watch the mission. And we talked last last episode, we have some folks on and... uh, a lot of people can do a lot of things that don't mean anything and go through life in a job or a role or make money without passion. And, and I admire the hell out of y'all for the passion that you have and watching you guys in Carrollton with the Notham family and all his co-workers. Man, if that doesn't pull your heartstrings and see that you guys care and, and, and you truly believe in the commitment of what you're doing is awesome. And it is awesome to watch. I believe we appreciate TMPA. You guys have been supporting us we have each other by since the very beginning, you know, before we were TMPA. So we, you know, we really appreciate that support. Yep. Absolutely. We were just wanting to be involved with Ranger Creek. We were just wanting to. That's what I figured. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't want to say yeah. it. Yeah. 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 We love you guys. Please, please stay safe on the road. Right. Thank you. You guys stay safe out there. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button. God bless all of you, and as always, may God bless Texas. <laughs>